I really appreciate uh, the chance again to speak to us at this moment. It has been uh, some time, but uh, I believe that the Lord has been uh, guiding and leading us into the paths of righteousness. And so I do appreciate uh, the prayer that has been offered. And uh, I continue praying that uh, the things we are going to learn in a few minutes will uh, resonate with us. And more so the time that you are living in where God is calling for a people who can be able to stand true to him during these trying moments. And so uh, the Lord has impressed me to share something with us. And uh, this will be, how do I surrender? This is uh, what we are going to look at briefly as uh, I shall be presenting to you. How do I surrender? This is uh, uh, the question that uh, everyone uh, may be asking of themselves that uh, in this day and age where evil and iniquity abound, how can I submit myself wholly to the leading of uh, the spirit of God? And uh, we know that the Bible contains everything, every needful information for those who are seeking uh, the Lord in truth and in spirit. Uh, I'd like just to, in the beginning, to share with us a statement, which is uh, 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 an anchor point to what we are going to look at today. And uh, this is found in uh, uh, Steps to Christ, uh, the book I love so much. Steps to Christ, page 43, paragraph three. The warfare against self is the greatest battle that uh, was ever fought. The yielding of self, surrendering all to the will of God requires a struggle, but the soul must submit to God before it can be renewed in holiness. But uh, what is the problem that arises with us or with the people every now and then? The problem is uh, recorded in uh, the same book, uh, page uh, 47, uh, paragraph two. This has been the greatest hindrance of our Christian life. We are told desires for goodness and holiness are right as far as they go. But if you stop here, they will avail nothing. Many will be lost while hoping and desiring to be Christians. They did not come to the point of yielding the will to God. They did not now choose to be Christians. And so uh, the, the problem that you find with Christendom is that uh, many people are willing, they are wishing to be Christians, but uh, they do not come to that point where they can fully surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit. And when we are speaking about uh, uh, a fully surrender to be worked on by the Holy Spirit, it is allowing Christ to order our steps to be able to hear that still voice telling us this is the way, follow it, and not trying to devise a way out from the problems that we are having. Uh, the, the, the reason why we fail is that uh, when we come to a crisis, we will want to devise a way out by ourselves rather than following the path that Christ tread on so that we may go fully as he went. And we know that when we partake of his suffering, then we are partaking of his uh, 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 righteousness. And so this is what is hindering our, our Christian journey, the warfare against self, the fully surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we know that um, all selfishness is sin. And so if there is anything in us that uh, will uh, uh, prompt us to work against the will of God, then we may know that we have not surrendered fully to the Lord and the working uh, of the Holy Spirit is not with us. In the book of Romans chapter 12, I'll be just looking at these familiar verses and familiar quotes. We are told, I beseech you therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So how do I surrender? It is giving our body as living sacrifices. Now, the important aspect of giving our bodies as uh, living sacrifices, we can look at the book of uh, Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14 says that, uh, unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. When you look at the margin, it says that the sanctuary shall be justified. We know that uh, since 1844, the sanctuary is being cleansed. But what is this sanctuary that is being cleansed? It is our soul temple from every defilement so that our bodies may be a board of, uh, or a temple of the Shekinah glory. Now, during the day of atonement, when uh, the sacrifices had been offered and they had been accepted before the Lord, the Shekinah glory came and filled the temple to show that the sacrifices had been accepted. This is the glory that the Lord would want us to partake of. When we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, then the spirit will be able to dwell in us. And where there is spirit, then there is no darkness because the spirit is the light and it is the life of um, our father, which is in heaven given unto us through Jesus Christ. Now, what is the importance of surrendering our bodies to be a living sacrifice unto God. When uh, you look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 says that a body he has prepared for me. And uh, looking at the commentary of that verse, we are told that uh, the eternal spirit dwelt in the temple of flesh. We know when man was created, he was created in the image of God. And man was not created for redemption, but he was created to bear the glory of God. So when we speak about a body being prepared to be a temple of that eternal spirit, it means that uh, the original design of God creating man is accomplished by now our bodies being the temple of the Shekinah glory or the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, 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 what is the main importance of allowing the Holy Spirit live or uh, uh, abide in us? Hebrews chapter 9, verses 14. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verses 14. We are talking about how do I surrender? And the first verse we have seen in Romans chapter 12 is uh, giving our bodies as living sacrifice and allowing our bodies to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, that Shekinah glory that um, was able to shine in the temple on the day of atonement when the sacrifices had been accepted. Now, uh, what is the main importance of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us? Hebrews chapter 9, verses 14. This is what uh, we read, that uh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So the reason why we have to offer our bodies as living sacrifices to be the temple of the Holy Spirit so that the eternal spirit may purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And this is what the Lord is seeking to do for us in this day of atonement when all our sins have to be taken away. Look at the book of Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter seven. Uh, I'd like us to explore this, the surrendering of self and the allowing of the Holy Spirit to work in us. The book of Daniel chapter seven. This is uh, a familiar book and a familiar chapter with us, a Seventh day Adventist. We are told, in the book of Daniel chapter 7, from verse 9, it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, 
and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Verses 10, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him and the judgment was set, the books were open. Verse 11, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. But now I want you to look keenly at uh, verse 12. Verse 12 tells us, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Now, that is a very uh, potent verse to read, that um, the dominion of the other three beasts, that is uh, Babylon, we have the Medopatia, and we have Greece, their dominion were taken up away, but their lives were continued for a season. Which beast continued their life? The beast that followed, the non-script beast, which is uh, uh, the Roman Empire. And so we find that uh, the philosophy, the principles of the other three beasts were continued in the fourth beast. But now we have something that is happening in the book of Daniel chapter 7. As the judgment is going on, we read in verse 13 and 14, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. So now we have two kingdoms. One that is a composite of the other three beasts. And this is the, uh, uh, the Roman empire. And we have another kingdom, which is the kingdom of the sun. So the principles, the life and the tenets of these bestial kingdoms continued in Rome. But now Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world and also is a beast. And so we see Jesus Christ as a lamb, as a beast. And because the life of other beasts is being continued in the other kingdoms, also we find that the kingdom of Christ, of this lamb beast has to be continued in the subjects of this kingdom. So now we understand when we read 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that uh, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. We become ambassadors. And then the life of Jesus Christ, who came down here on earth and died, is continued in the subjects of his kingdom. Just like the life and the principles of Satan's kingdom continues in the kingdom, in the children of disobedience, the life, the principles, and the tenets of the lamb have to be continued in his children. Going on in Daniel chapter 7, verses, uh, 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 verses 26, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, the dominion of the little horn, and this dominion, the little horn received from the great dragon. What is this dominion? The dominion of sin, the reign of terror, the reign of evil. This dominion is taken away to consume and destroy it into the end. How is it destroyed? That the saints are now having victory over sin. Remember, our topic is how do I surrender? And we are looking at giving our lives, our bodies, as a living temple so that the Shekinah glory of God may dwell there. And when the Shekinah glory dwell there or the Holy Spirit of God, then the dominion of Satan is taken away. And then uh, now the original plan of God in creating man is fulfilled. And because it was destroyed, a prophecy was given in Genesis, the first gospel, Genesis chapter three, verse 15, that I'll put an enmity between thy seed and the seed of the woman. That is the first gospel and the first prophecy when man came or fell into sin. That seed is Christ himself according to Galatians chapter 3, 16. And then we are told that uh, whoever is born of God does not continue to sin because the seed of he who has born him remains in him and he cannot sin. And so we are seeing 
the need of giving our bodies as a living sacrifice so that the first prophecy and the first gospel that was announced in the book of Genesis may be fulfilled in the believers, that the seed of the woman, which is Jesus Christ himself, by the living spirit may be able to dwell in us and do the work of uh, uh, the reformation. If uh, we do not present our bodies as living sacrifices, then we remain in our sin. And so uh, the Lord has purchased us for to do good works and uh, we should know that we have been bought by a price but uh, uh, the question the question really remains that uh, how do i surrender the book of jeremiah chapter 13 verses 23 the book of jeremiah chapter 13 verses 23 we read can an, can the ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. How do we do good when we can't even change ourselves? We are told that uh, uh, the Lord himself will make a covenant with his people in the last days, and he shall write his laws in their minds. He shall write his laws on their heart. When uh, you enter into the sanctuary in the most holy place, you find that the law was in the most holy place in the Ark of the Covenant. That is like the inner chambers, the inner shrine of the temple, likened unto our inner soul. So instead of the laws being found outside the inner chamber, they are found inside the inner chamber. So the Lord is willing that he may write his laws upon our minds, upon our forehead, so that we may be able to keep his laws. Now, no man can do such a work. It is only by the drawing of the spirit of God that we can achieve that. And so in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. We know that uh, really, if uh, the spirit of the Lord does not draw us, then we can do nothing. For in uh, the book of Romans chapter seven, verses 18 and 19, Romans chapter seven, verses 18 and 19. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I will do, I do not, but the evil which I will do, I will not, that I do. And unless Christ gets hold of us, then there is nothing that we can present before him that is acceptable. And so our work is uh, to surrender ourselves, to let him control our conscience. And here comes the, the, what we call the willpower. The Lord has given us freedom of choice, but in this freedom of choice, we ourselves have to practice the willpower so that we may learn to refuse evil and accept good. But uh, how do we learn to uh, accept that which is good and refuse what is evil? We know that uh, in us there is nothing good. And so to be able to learn to receive what is good and refuse to what, that which is evil is to allow the living word of God, which is sharper than the two-edged sword, to abide in us. Psalms 119 verses 11. Psalms 119 verses 11. It says that uh, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. This is the surrender. If uh, we continue feeding on the things which doesn't fortify our minds to make our willpower choose what is right, then we shall never overcome sin. The secret is continually feeding on the word of God. Just as we feed on the normal food and our body assimilates it, and then we uh, become healthy uh, physically and naturally. So spiritually, we have to continue feeding on the word of God, hide it in our heart so that we may not sin against God. So in Philippians chapter two, verse 13, for it is God, which worketh in you both to will and to do of his 
own good pleasure. When uh, we have the word of God in our lives, therein lies the power to overcome sin. Why? Because we are told in John 6, 63, that uh, the word itself, it is the spirit and it is life. So when we continually feast on the word of God, when we take most of our time dwelling upon the things that uh, really glorify the Lord, then we are partaking of this eternal spirit, which uh, 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 will consume every defect and spot in our life so that we may be presented before the Lord, a holy people. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verses 12. Let us look at second Corinthians chapter eight, verses 12. We are looking, how do I surrender all to the Lord and then be a temple that an eternal spirit can dwell? For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not. So we must be willing. We must be willing in our mind and then uh, uh, fortify our willpower so that uh, by continually feeding on the word of God, our willpower may be uh, strong enough to choose that which is right and shun what it is evil. In, uh, 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 in the quote that we read in the beginning, uh, Steps to Christ, page 47, paragraph 2, desires for goodness and holiness are right as far as they go. But if you stop here, they will avail nothing. So we must come out of wishing to be Christians and today choose to be Christians. The good thing that uh, the Lord doesn't force anyone, it is something that you have to choose yourself. Unlike the devil who forces himself things on people, but um, we can train our minds as Christians to choose what is right by uh, uh, dwelling on the word of God. 48.1 of Steps to Christ. Through the right exercise of the will, an entire change may be made in your life. By yielding up your will to Christ, you align yourself with the power that is above all principalities and powers. You will have strength from above to hold you steady fast, and thus, through constant surrender to God, you will be enabled to live the new life, even the life of faith. And so, here comes the secret of how do I surrender? It is yielding up your will to Christ. Now, somebody asked, what is it to yield your will to Christ? Many times, we desire for things that uh, uh, really are not important in life. And when we come to review them, we find that, oh, this thing could have not benefited me in anything. But uh, when we are desiring something, we have to check with the word of God. Is this the right thing? When Christ was upon the earth, always he lived to do the will of God. And he says that I have not come to do my own will, but the will of him who has sent me. And so always we have to remember that as Christians whom have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, we are not of our own. And whenever we want to do something, we have to consult with the Lord. Is this thing that I'm going to do uh, acceptable in the kingdom of God? Luke chapter 22, verses 41 to 42. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And so the moment we are wishing or desiring to do something, do we take time to pray and ask the Lord, this thing that I want to do, is it your will or is it my will? And if we find that this is clashing with the will of God, what do we have to do at that moment? We have to surrender implicitly without begrudging the Lord of uh, what we are surrendering unto him. And in any ways, what we can only give to God is our sinfulness in exchange of his righteousness. So when we talk about surrendering and yielding our will, actually there's nothing that we are benefiting the Lord. We are benefiting ourselves because 
we exchange our filthiness with the righteousness of our Lord. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And again, when we want to do something, do we ask ourselves that uh, we are meeting actually the Lord's prayer that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? What is happening in heaven actually? It is a place of perfect holiness. So the things that we will want to do in our life, are they going to bring perfection unto us? For we are told, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. So when we want to do something, do we ever ask that this thing that I want to do, is it going to bring perfection unto the kingdom of God? And uh, is it going to help me to overcome? And so we appointed to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Our work is to accept him as the propitiation for our sins and then be able to exchange our sin with, uh, uh, with, the, uh, with his righteousness. In uh, uh, CTBH, uh, this is uh, Christian teaching and behavior, uh, page uh, 148, paragraph one. CTBH 148, paragraph one. We read this. The will is the governing power in the nature of man. If the will is set right, all the rest of the being will come under its sway. The will is not the test or the inclination, but it is the choice, the deciding power, the kingly power, which works in the children of men unto obedience to God or to disobedience. You will be in constant peril until you understand the true force of the will. You may believe and promise all things, but your promises and your faith are of no account until you put your will on the right side. If you will fight the fight of faith with your willpower, there is no doubt that you will conquer. And this can only be accomplished by uh, 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 accepting Jesus Christ our, as our Savior. Philippians chapter 1, verses 6. Philippians chapter 1, verses 6. Talking about um, uh, setting the willpower right. How can this be accomplished? And this really strikes at the message of justification by faith that uh, all through it is Christ working in us to do uh, of his will. Philippians chapter one, verse six, we read that uh, being confident uh, of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So many of the Christians start a journey, but uh, when they reach on the way, they will want to continue the journey on their own without continuing to look unto Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. This has been a hindrance in our development of character and continuing in righteousness. In every step of advance, our eyes have to be fixed on Jesus Christ. Remember the story of Peter, when he wanted to come to Jesus, he was told, come walk on the water. But uh, when he looked at uh, the roaring sea and the tempest, he lost sight of Jesus Christ, and then he started to sing. This is where we lose Jesus Christ. When uh, we are passing through the life and reach at a place, we see that uh, now this one, I can do it on my own. Then actually the tempest of life comes upon us and we are not able to continue in righteousness. We start uh, really uh, losing our footing in our Christian journey. The secret is continuing to be behold Jesus Christ in whom there is the divine power to enable humanity be conquerors. We are told divinity combined with humanity does not sin and his bidings are his enablings. And so when he bids us, come unto me who labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Then we have to believe in that promise and walk steadfastly towards it while beholding Jesus Christ and we shall be able to obtain the victory that um, we 
are lacking many times. So our part is to put our will on the side of Christ. Purpose in your life that whatever the circumstances, I will not yield to self. I will not yield to what my body wants. I will not yield to what my appetite wants, or I will not yield to what my eyes are seeing, but I will approach the Lord in prayer. I will consult the word of God. What does it say that I should do? And even if the word of God is crossing with our desires, we should accept it as it is because we know that the word of the Lord does not lead into sin, but uh, it leads into righteousness. If you cannot control your impulses, your motion, as you may desire, you can control the will. And thus an entire change will be wrought in your life. That is uh, what uh, Ellen G. White tells us. Why are many youths who are mature in age easily tempted and drawn to sin? And not only even the youths, but even the adults who have been in church for so long, why are they led astray so easily? This is um, uh, CC, uh, this is the conflict and courage, uh, page uh, 304, uh, paragraph four. We, we read this. The reason why the youth and even those of mature years are so easily led into temptation and sin is that they do not study the word of God and meditate upon it as they should. The lack of firm, decided willpower, which is manifest in life and character, results from neglect of the sacred instruction of God's word. They do not, by honest effort, direct the mind to that which will inspire pure, holy thought and divert it from that which is impure and untrue. There are few who choose the better part, who sit at the feet of Jesus as did Mary to learn of the divine teacher. Few treasure his words in the heart and practice them in the life. So many of the people who are being tempted and led away into sin, uh, they study the word of God just as to pass time, but they do not take time to meditate upon it until the word of God becomes a personality in their lives. By the way, this statement is so uh, uh, important to us. Uh, it should be in uh, uh, CM97. Let me just try to find it uh, very quickly. That um, the word of God becomes a personality in those uh, who believe the gospel becomes a personality. This is uh, in CE, not CM, Christian Education, page 97, paragraph one. I'll share with you the screen. Look at this keenly. We are talking about how do I surrender? And we see that it is giving our bodies as living sacrifice. Uh, reading and meditating upon the word of God so that uh, it may get hold of uh, every faculty of our being so that our willpower may be strengthened towards doing or uh, making the right choices. Look at uh, CE 97.1. The gospel of Christ becomes a personality in those who believe and make them living epistles known and read of all men. In this way, the living of godliness passes into the multitude. The heavenly intelligences are able to discern the true elements of greatness in character, for only goodness is esteemed as efficiency with God. Now, I find this quote so much important with the, the, the issue that we are dealing with, how do we surrender? Think about this. Christ is the thought of God made audible. What was in the thought of God the Father was, um, uh, was expressed as a person. And so this person is the word. Now, this same word is the one that comes and occupies our minds. And so when the word, which is Christ, is accepted by faith, the gospel becomes a personality. Which kind of personality is this? 
the personality of Christ himself. We become uh, uh, reflectors of the character of Christ because he has become the personality in us. By partaking of that spirit, then uh, Christ is formed within the hope of glory, Colossians chapter 1, verses 27. This is how the gospel becomes a personality in those who believe, which is Christ is formed within the hope of glory. So when we partake of the word of God, the personality of Christ is formed within. And then when the people look at us, they see Christians. It means that we have partaken of the name of the other. Christ like we have just been adopted in the uh, in the family of god uh, via the cleansing blood of jesus christ and so as we bring this to a close on how do we surrender the book of first john the book of first john this uh, a familiar text with us first john chapter 2 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 to verses 14. Hear what the word of the Lord says. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Are forgiven you for his name's sake. Verse 13. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the father. Verses 14, I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and what has caused you to be strong, the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one. And so this full surrender is the accepting of the word of God to dwell in us fully. And when the word of God dwells in us fully, then uh, we become strong and we overcome the uh, wicked one. We overcome the wicked one. In uh, historical sketches, page 142, Sister White tells us the very exercise of the will power was evident to Jesus that the man believed and his hand was healed in the act of stretching it forth. Uh, it talks about the man who was healed of, uh, 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 of the hand which was withered. He exercised his will. When he was told that stretch your hand and be healed, he didn't have to question whether stretching the hand will work or will not work. The willpower, when it is willing to do something, then there lies the strength of doing that thing. But uh, uh, many uh, that claim to be Christians, they read the word of God, they read the promises they are in, but they doubt. Will it really work if I do as it says? Pure religion has to do with the will. The will is the governing power in the nature of man. The will is to be set in the right order or on the right side. And then it will be able to control the habits and the customs. And the old man will not have a place in your life, but you will be made a new man. And so, uh, uh, I can just urge us as a people who are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. In such a time that you are living in where there are many persuasions towards a uh, tendency of doing what is not right, we have to decide that uh, we will not serve the devil, but uh, we will yield to Jesus Christ fully. We will surrender our body not to be controlled by the flesh, but to be controlled by the eternal spirit, which will purge our conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. Uh, uh, I, I, I'll just like to say this, that uh, we may believe the promises that all things has been given unto us. Jesus Christ, when uh, he had triumphed over the evil and went to his father and came back on the earth, he said, all power and authority is given to me. That authority and the power he gives to his children. And those who accepted and believed on his name, he has given the power to become the uh, sons of God. And then the spirit is enabled to work on our dead conscience and 
purge us and make us living episodes. Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my, uh, uh, my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We have always to allow the word of God to control our desires. Lastly, the last verse, Galatians, the book of uh, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16. The word of God says that um, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. The spirit and the flesh are warring against each other, but a change has to be wrought in our lives. How does that change get effected? By letting the mind that was in Christ be in us, by letting that spirit, eternal spirit that allowed Christ to offer himself without spot to dwell in us, then we shall be able to be renewed into holiness and uh, uh, be able to walk with the Lord, never to fall again. The Lord is seeking a people who can stand true to him during this investigative judgment. I pray that uh, you may be the person, I pray that I may be the person that uh, will not dishonor our Lord in continuing to sin. And may the Lord bless us and grant us a will that is able to choose that which is right and uh, shun that which is evil. Shall we pray in uh, uh, closing the session? Our Heavenly Father, we really appreciate your name so much that uh, you have not withheld anything from us, but have given us rich gifts. You have dispensed with the power to overcome sin. By the blood of the Son, we are able to overcome. We pray that uh, we may not be like the land which it receiveth rain, but uh, uh, makes stones and briars to grow on it. But we may be that fertile soil that when it receives the rain from thee, we shall produce the fruits therein, even the fruits of repentance and righteousness. Abide with us, I pray, this in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen.